Amen. We're going to continue in our time of worship, and uh, giving is a, is a part of our worship as well. And the way we're doing it this summer, as things are, we're in our summer rhythm, uh, we're a bit more um, just focused on engaging the Word of God, a bit more intimate. We'll be having some uh, testimonies next month. We're reflecting on the songs of the Bible and timeless truths this month. But you can still give, and with the, but right in the back, we have a giving box and at any point now or in the service, you can just go right back to the giving box um, and we'll make that available. Let's make that visible uh, right there um, as well so that it's front and center for everyone. It's just right in the back. You can give your offering uh, now or at any point throughout the service or after service as well. And there are many ways that you can give. You can give directly through our giving box. You can give online. That's a preferred method for many. You can uh, give through text, 84321. Just follow the instructions and you'll be able to give directly to Imago Church. And you can also give by check directly to Imago. And uh, again, uh, many ways to be able to give and build up the kingdom of God. And we're all contributors here at Imago Church. So we give of our time, of our treasure, and our talents as well. So um, prayerfully uh, consider that, especially as we are on this journey together and seeing what God is doing here at Imago. As was mentioned during the announcements time, um, we are going to have um, a, a way to bless our neighbors to outreach on July 16th. We've, that's always been part of our, our DNA here at Imago. We're an other-centered church. We're not just about ourselves. And we want to be able, especially now that uh, things with the pandemic and restrictions and all of that stuff have really just uh, uh, changed significantly and things are in a much better place now, we want to get back to that other-centered attitude as a church to be able to go out to our community, to love them, to serve them, to bless them, and to let them know we're here. We're here as the presence of Christ here in this area, and we'd love to pray for you, serve you, and care for you. So for right now, mark the date, as Michelle mentioned earlier today, July 16th. All the details are coming around, and tentatively, we're going to do it here at the church campus, and we're doing it with some partnership with some uh, leaders and friends over at Sunrise, and that will be here at Imago Church on July 16th. So uh, we'll be in touch with uh, coordinating that, with organizing that, but mark the date, invite friends, invite family, invite neighbors. We're going to have a barbecue, a time of just connecting, experiencing the hope of Christ through restored relationships as well. That'll be July 16th here at the church. And uh, yeah, we're just looking for the Holy Spirit to continue to make connections as we're in this season of rebuilding and restoration. After devastation comes restoration. I just reflected on that this week in the book of Job as Job, after his season of suffering and devastation, God restored him. And we believe God is doing the same in our lives and in the life of our church as well. Amen. And so um, let's just continue to be working toward that. And also on July 24th, one thing that um, Jesus says is, let all the children come to me. And on July 24th, we really want to have a, a children-focused service where we are focusing and welcoming our children into the family of God. And so um, uh, Sister Shailene is working on organizing some of that, and it's all going to be coming together in the next few weeks. But just keep in mind and mark July 24th, that's going to be a Kids Day focused uh, service and some activities after the service as well. So be praying into all of that. We're going to continue now in our time of worship by opening up the Word of God. And today we're going to be in the book of Numbers, um, chapter 21, verses 17 to 20. And once again, we want to wish all fathers here in person and online and all father figures or dads a, a very special Father's Day. We thank God for you and we pray for you and, and today we're celebrating you. And so we rejoice uh, in the Lord in that. And again, as we say here often at Imago, where the ideal lacks, the grace of God abounds 
and God has provided a, a spiritual family to fill in grace in those seasons. So we're going to continue now with uh, opening up our, our time of, uh, of, 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 um, of meditating on Scripture in the book of Numbers. Numbers 21, 17 through 20. La escritura de hoy es el libro de Números, capítulo 21, 17 al 20. Let's hear now with open ears and open hearts from the word of God. Numbers 21, 17 to 20. Then Israel sang this song. Spring up, O well, sing about it. About the well that the princes dug, that the nobles of the people sang. The nobles with scepters and staffs. Then they went from the wilderness to to Matana, from Matana to Nahaliel, from Nahaliel to Bamoth, and from Bamoth to the valley in Moab, where the top of Pisgah overlooks the wasteland. Let's pray together. Thank you, God, for your precious, precious word, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us, that you are for us, that you are ahead of us, in this journey of life. Today, God, would you be our light? Que seas nuestra luz, Dios Santo. Guide us, Lord, in the desert and in the wilderness. Guide us in the unknown and in the uncertain, God. Take us to the promised land and remind us, God, that we can't get into the promised land without going through the wilderness. And oftentimes that wilderness, that desert, Lord, is the pathway to, that takes us to that promised land, Lord. That, that, that pathway that takes us to you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, we pray for all of those that are sick, for all those that are hurting, for all those that are uh, restoring, Lord God. We pray for our world, which so uh, desperately needs you, God. We pray for all the tensions that exist, Lord, we, we name those, we see those, Lord, but our eyes continue to be fixed on you, and we ask, Lord, that you be the one to use us as your presence, as your hands and feet, Lord, to bring peace, love, shalom, care in those areas of life, God. We pray for those that are sick, for those that are recovering. We thank you, Lord, for our brother, uh, dear brother Ruben Madrid, Lord, who's now doing better, who's back home, Lord, restoring, recovering, God from that um, important surgery that he had, Lord. Thank you that your hand of healing continues to be over him, Lord. Bless him, take care of him, be with Elizabeth and the entire family as well, God. We also pray, Lord God, for, um, for, for those that are recovering and recuperating, Lord, as well, God. We pray for uh, uh, a brother Raul that I um, was told of today, Lord, who's just recovering in the hospital, Lord, after having an accident. So, Lord, your hand of healing and peace be over him. God, we also pray for, um, for new life, God. We pray for my wife, for Charlotte, for my family. We'll be welcoming, Lord, our third child this week as well. And, Lord, would you be the one, God, to just uh, cover us with your grace, with your mercy, with your strength. And thank you, Lord, for this precious family of God, Lord, who continues to seek you and follow you in all seasons and no matter what. And God, we're grateful and we celebrate Father's Day today, but we also celebrate several other things, God. We celebrate this, this, uh, this day of reconciliation called Juneteenth, God. And on behalf of the Imago family, Lord, we love and care for, um, for this call that you've given us, Lord, to be ministers of reconciliation and restoration, Lord God. Thank you for your family, for the family of God, Lord, for the Imago Day that is represented in all your people, Lord, and specifically, Lord, we're thankful, God, for our black and African-American sisters and brothers, the many rivers that have been crossed, Lord, and the journeys that we continue to be on as individuals and as a country, and as we move toward, Lord, this call of being ministers of reconciliation to be like you, God. And Lord, in the desert lands and wildernesses that we find ourselves, we just pray, Jesus, that you would be our guide Speak to us through your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we've been um, in this summer rhythm 
where we've changed the pace a bit in June, July, and August, especially because this is a time within our church life and church community where many people are traveling in and out of town, doing different things. There's some online, some in person. We have folks from our Imago community right now all over the world, literally some in uh, Europe, some in the African continent, uh, some on their way to Central America as well. And w but we still uh, find ways to continue to um, really just change up the rhythm throughout the summer, knowing that, yeah, we're a community that is sent out to different places to be um, the people of God and to shine and be ambassadors of Jesus wherever it is that God takes us. But for those that uh, continue um, throughout the summer, we have ways that we uh, change things up and get a bit more creative like in June, where we're really focusing on timeless truths, on the timeless truths that we find in the songs of the Bible, the songs that we sing through our praises, through, uh, through our, our worship. And uh, today, we're going to be looking at one of the oldest songs in the Bible. And this song is found in the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses uh, 17 to 18 specifically, but we read all the way to 20. So yeah, even before there were the Psalms, we have the songs that the people of God sang while they were in the desert, after the Exodus. After the Exodus, after they had left slavery in Egypt, they were in the wilderness. They were in the desert for 40 long years. 40 years without clarity. 40 years of unanswered questions. 40 years of patience. Who here has ever prayed that God would give you patience? <laughs> we learn patience in the wilderness, in seasons of wilderness, in the unknown. Trust is what we learn when our heart, when our soul, when we feel like we are in the desert because the only one we can depend on is God. In this book that we're seeing the, the song in today, in the book of Numbers, it's a book that oftentimes gets overlooked or not even read too much. And I think partly it gets overlooked because it has a boring name, right? Numbers. Who just wants to read a book called Numbers? Is this a math book? What, what exactly is going on here, right? But in the English translation, this book is called Numbers because in the first few chapters of Numbers, there's a census of numbers that were taken into account in the first section of the book. But in the original Hebrew language, the fourth book of the Bible is actually called In the Wilderness or In the Desert. That's what this book of the Bible was originally called, In the Wilderness or In the Desert. In some ways, it's like a, a travel log or a travel blog or vlog of the Israelites' journey through the desert toward the promised land. This is the journey, a journey that really should only take about two weeks on foot if they were focused in the right direction that they needed to go to. But the people of God, it actually took them approximately 40 years to accomplish the journey through the desert. Now, in order to know where we need to go, it's important to know for, for us to know where we are and where we've been. And that can apply to you. In order to know where you're going in this life, it's important to know where you are and where you've been. Otherwise, if you don't have clarity on that, you can go in circles in the wilderness. You know, an example of that is back in 2010, um, actually, uh, Danny was telling me earlier today he's going to be in Central America. We'll pray for him next month as he's heading to Costa Rica. Back in 2010, I was invited to go to Costa Rica, and as I was planning my trip, I booked a round-trip flight from San Jose to San Jose because at the time I lived in Northern California and the, and the nearest airport to me was San Jose Airport and that was going to San Jose, Costa Rica. But I was literally going on the ticket it said from San Jose to San Jose, round trip. But now imagine if I didn't have clarity on my journey. 
that would be an extremely confusing experience. But the first step in figuring out any kind of confusing journey, whether you've felt that your journey has been confusing, the first step to get clarity on a confusing journey is to get clarity on where you are. Where are you right now? That was the first question that God ever asked people, that God ever asked human beings. Adam and Eve in Genesis 3, that's the question that God asked them. Some of you remember what it was. It was the question, where are you? Where are you right now? Today, our God extends that same question to you. Where are you? Fill in your name. Where are you? Are you in the desert? Are you going in circles? Let's start by answering that question before God. Where are you right now? Where are you really? Because you can only understand where you are now once you have awareness on where you've been or where you came from. Knowing where I came from will help me understand where I am now, which will then in turn guide me into my destination on where I need to go. Godly wisdom begins with trust in the Lord. Godly wisdom begins with being honest before God, with connecting the dots on where I am, where I came from, and where I'm going. That's actually what distinguishes the wise person in the Bible from the fool in the Proverbs and in the books of wisdom that we find in Scripture. The foolish person never asks themselves that question. Where am I? How did I get here? Where am I going? The foolish person, person is unable to connect the dots in their life. In fact, the fool, according to the Proverbs and the books of wisdom, actually has no interest in knowing where they are, how they got there, or where they are going. The foolish person thinks it's just all random. It's just all random events and has no interest in connecting dots, has no interest in really answering the question, where am I now? For 40 years in the desert, the Israelites would begin on this journey. Then they would get motivated, then distracted, and then they would lose their way, and then back in circles again. Again, a journey that would really take only about two weeks if they focused and kept that road of obedience to God in that same direction. But it became a journey in the wilderness for 40 years. One of the things we've been talking about this month is an invitation and a challenge for all of us to develop a spiritual routine, a spiritual routine that ties us back to reality, that gets us back to God, that shows us a way back home, that gives us clarity where we are. And a spiritual routine is so important. And again, it doesn't have to be technical. It can be something that takes you 20 minutes, two hours, or just two minutes a day in, at different points in the day. Something that can tie you back home. Something that can invite you to pause, to pray, and to worship. To pause, to pray, and to refocus on your journey. Developing a spiritual routine. And we're going to be talking more and more about this this month and then in the fall as well. You know, I was reading this story earlier this week about um, people that lived um, hundreds of years ago um, up in northern Canada in just cabins. And there were some intense um, blizzards that would happen up there in this extreme weather. And something that happened and many fatalities happened over the years so people had to learn how to find a solution to this is that in these cabins that were in extreme blizzards and, and snow weather, people sometimes needed to go out. This was before heaters, before any of that. They needed to go out to get firewood and then come back home to the cabin in order to warm up. But what would happen sometimes? They would go out, but the blizzard was so intense, the snow weather was so intense, 
that they actually got disoriented and they couldn't find their way back home because in every direction, all they saw was blizzard, all they saw was snow, all they saw was just blankets and blankets of snow. They had no direction home. So one thing that people started to do up in northern Canada and in communities like that, in cabin communities, is that the person that would go out to fetch uh, firewood during the blizzard, they actually began to tie a rope to themselves, to tie a rope to themselves back to the house so that when they would get the firewood in the middle of the blizzard, they would just follow the rope back and that rope would take them back home. Because in this life, we experience all kinds of blizzards, all kinds of storms like we sang about earlier today. But we get into the spiritual routine to tie a rope to us, to tie a rope to get us back home. Otherwise, we're going to walk in circles in that blizzard, in that wilderness. The presence of God is that rope is that rope that will always bring us home. I've heard it said before, well, I, honestly, Pastor Carlos, I don't have time. I don't have time to meditate on Scripture. I don't have time because um, I'm a super busy person, super important person. But here's the reality check. Spending time with the Lord, tying a rope to yourself that will take you back home, spending time with the Lord in devotion, in worship, in community, in pausing, in praying, that will not waste your time. In fact, it will save you time. It can save you 40 years of wandering in foolishness. It can save you Years and years of distraction. Spending time with the Lord will never waste your time. It will save you time. Not only time, but it's going to save you from insanity. And I literally mean that, right? Albert Einstein once said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. It's going circles and circles in the wilderness. It's going circles and circles in the blizzards of life and expecting a different result. Spending time with the Lord through faith, through devotion, through a spiritual routine, it will not waste your time, but it will actually save you time and give you time. It will give you energy. It will give you peace of mind, and it will give you sanity. Hey, and I'm preaching to myself here. There's really only one way I've kept sanity in this life, and it's been by tying a rope to myself that takes me back home through that spiritual routine. Some people think, well, no, you know what? I'm good. I'll just do it my way. All right, well, how's that going for you? How has that gone for you? How did it go for the Israelites here? 40 years in the wilderness, 40 years in circles? Are you turning what could be a two-week journey through the wilderness into a 40-year journey of insanity and of distraction? The journey that God's people, the Israelites, were on here was a journey that was out of slavery from Egypt, and then we all know this, they went to Mount Sinai. And at Mount Sinai, that's where they got the the Ten Commandments. And then in the book of Numbers, their whole journey is this. They went Mount Sinai, they were there for a while, and then they traveled, and every time they needed to travel, they needed to take count of who was with them. That's why it's called Numbers. They needed uh, a count, a census of, of who was going. And then they went to a place called Paran, which was another wilderness. Then they traveled, then another wilderness called Moab, and then traveled again, and then finally to the Promised Land. And a lot happened in the wilderness in Sinai in that first place. Some of us know about what happened in Sinai. Yes, that's where we got the Ten Commandments, but that's also where the, the, the people of God who had followed God out of slavery into, toward the Promised Land where they start, first started to give in to idol worship. That's where they first started worshiping a golden calf. 
while they were receiving the Ten Commandments from God. Then that's where Moses interceded for God to have mercy on the Israelites. Sometimes we can think that that was just a quick event, but the Israelites were actually in the wilderness under Mount Sinai uh, camping out there for an entire year. They camped out there and they were ready to travel. They took count of who was with them. That's again why we call this book Numbers or Numeros in Spanish, because they needed to take account of those who were with them as they were preparing to travel. Then then they were on their way to this place called Paran, and they're excited, and then the excitement that they have begins to turn into complaining. They're tired. They're hungry. They're complaining about Moses, the leader that God has entrusted to guide the Israelites through the desert. Now he's the problem. His brother Aaron and, and Miriam and others, they begin to complain about him in front of those that they are leading in the wilderness. Moses is experiencing work and family challenges. In the desert, we experience work drama and family drama. I'm so glad none of us experience that anymore. That's there in the desert. Moses experienced both work drama with those he's serving and family drama. When we go through deserts and wilderness in our life, we're going to experience the same. The Bible is where we find our story as well, the story of God and humanity. We find our story there. Moses was experiencing all of those challenges, and we've all been there as well because we've been in seasons of desert and of wilderness. Those moments where you think, where you feel, well, here we go again. We're getting into the same old arguments, the same old complaints. We thought we were past that, but nope, here we go again. We're circling back to square one in the relational desert. Something very significant happens in the wilderness of Paran. God actually gives the people a way, a way out, a way to the promised land, a pathway directly to the promised land. But instead of trusting God's way, what do they do? They trust in themselves. And by trusting in themselves, instead of trusting God, they actually refuse to enter the promised land. Like a child who gets comfortable playing in the mud because he's so used to it. He can't even imagine playing in the ocean. God is inviting each one of us to leave the mud and run toward the ocean beach to run toward the ocean beach and yes we've all been there the ocean can seem scary it has waves and at times it may seem overwhelming but there is no comparison between the mud and the ocean God's inviting us into so much more the Israelites refused to enter the promised land even though there was a clear pathway for them, that, that serves as a reminder to us of the freedom of God and the freedom that we have, the freedom to make choices that he has given us. Even though, yes, God will remain faithful to us in both our wise and our unwise decisions, but when we're foolish, when we make foolish choices, there will be reality and consequences. It's not always just God punishing or whatever it may be. No, God's given us freedom. When we make foolish choices, there will be reality and consequences. But the good news is he is faithful, even in the reality, even in those consequences, in those deserts, in those wilderness. The grace of God will be with us, as was even prayed earlier, in our foolish choices. He will be with us. He gives us a way in the desert. He will take us through the wilderness. In the wilderness, where we read about this song that the people of God sing, we see a lot, a lot of rebellion that happens in the wilderness. But the most amazing part is that through the rebellion, God continues to care for and provide for his people. He provides for them through this thing called manna. Manna was food from the sky. 
food to eat. He gives them shelter, a place to sleep, to rest, to worship. God continues to love his people in the desert and through the wilderness. You know, the word manna, I'm not sure if some of us know exactly what that means. Do you know what manna means? Manna just simply means, what is it? God provides, what is it? Whatever it is for you, whatever you need in the desert. And he'll provide it in the most unlikely way. Whatever wilderness, whatever desert you may be going through today, remember this. God's love and mercy is greater than our rebellion. God's care is even greater than the sense of loss and confusion that we feel in the wilderness. God's grace is more real than our foolishness. And here's the truth about the seasons of desert, the seasons of wilderness that we go through. We cannot get to the promised land without going through the desert land. We cannot get to the promised land without going through the desert land in the wilderness. God's faithfulness is greater than our complaints. At the end of the book of Numbers, the people of God, they continue to complain, to grumble, but God continues to be God because that's who he's chosen to be. He continues to save, he continues to provide, he continues to protect his people. Why? Because he loves his people. He loves you. Even in our pettiness, he loves us. He will guide us. He will protect us. He will provide for us that manna from above. He cares for you. He will never leave you. He will walk with you through the wilderness, whether it takes two weeks or 40 years. He will be faithful. May we trust in May we trust the Lord that in the desert, in the wilderness, the Lord will continue to save. The Lord will continue to provide for you, to protect you, not because you or I deserve it, because that's who God is. That is the God that we worship. So that's why we sing. That's why we sing songs like this, songs that say, spring up, O well, sing about it, Lord provide for your people through the, through the wasteland, as it says here. Through the wilderness, through the wasteland, the people of God sang. And that's why we sing. Through seasons of wilderness, through seasons that feel like a wasteland, wasted time, wasted season, whatever it may be, but we continue to sing because the freedom and the strength that we have in Christ is that together in the wilderness we can lift up our voices and sing. And we will sing through the desert all the way to the promised land. So we're going to continue now to just reflect and pray right where you are. You don't have to stand. You can be seated and pray. And I'm going to invite the, the uh, praise team to be able to lead us in a song that we can sing in whatever wilderness, in whatever desert season you may feel that you're in, in this time. And after that, I'll just close us in prayer, and then we'll stand and finish with our final song. So let's go ahead and take a moment and sing our song in the wilderness. Crying out from 
from the pit of my despair. There you were in the shadows, holding out your hand. You met me there, and now where would I be without you? Where would I? Jesus, as you were the voice in the desert, calling me out in the dead of night, fighting my battles for me. You were my rescue story. You lifted me up from the ashes and carried my soul from death to life, bringing me from glory to glory. You are my rescue story. As you were writing the pages before I had a name, before I needed grace. Cause every time I ran away, you were louder than my shame. And now, where would I be without you? Where would I be? And Jesus, cause you were the voice in the desert, calling me out in the dead of night, fighting my battles for me. You were my
Amen. The Lord is our rescue, the rope that takes us back home in the blizzard, in the wilderness. Our songs are our prayers. And Lord, we just pray that this song would be our prayer to you today, Lord. Rescue us, God. Save us. That's not a sign of weakness. That's a sign of strength and being rooted in reality, Lord, that we cannot do this on our own. So, Lord, I just pray that you would continue to guide us through whatever season that we're in, God. And my prayer for us continues to be that you, we would find a spiritual routine this month, this season, that can be that rope that takes us back home. A routine where we pause, we pray, and we worship. The purpose of a spiritual routine is to remember God and to connect with the living God on a daily basis, on several times throughout the day, to ask for his strength, to ask for his peace throughout all of our days. Lord God, we ask that you would guide us in developing this spiritual routine to experience your peace, your presence, your power, God, on a day-by-day basis remembering that we are never alone and that you always provide a way. Provide a way, Lord, to take us through the desert land into the promised land, which is your presence, O Jesus. Pray that everyone here would remember that they are beloved by God. They are cared for, secured, that because of you, Jesus, in Christ, Lord, we are accepted, we are secure, we are set free. And as we prepare, Lord, to close out with this final song, would you receive it as a sweet aroma of worship to you this morning, we pray. In the faithful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's stand and let's close with this final song. Let it be our closing prayer today.